Hello everybody, so uh, I'm back after a little bit of a break. So I wanted to show off the uh, progress of my um, my multiplayer game that I've been working on, which uh, I believe the name I'm going for is Quackout. Um, if you have a better name, let me know. Um, but that's the best name I could think of. So um, yeah, so Quackout is what uh, I've, I've settled on for now. Um, so anyway, I just kind of wanted to give you a development update on this. So, as you can see in front of me, um, I've been using this new technique um, that basically takes your uh, a, a 3D model and then creates an octahedral imposter of it. Um, and that's the, uh, uh, let's see. I forgot what the guy's name was. It's like Wojcik. Uh, PA, I, I think, a lot of that. Uh, but his add-on for octahedral imposters basically allows you to have a completely fake 3D object. And so actually, I have two different projects. One where I actually bake the um, bake everything, so I can actually show you the uh, yeah. Here's like an asset here for an uh, assault rifle, and then here's the actual result of the uh, of the bake. And then I actually made a custom shader so the uh, say if we're, uh, yeah, so I actually have it so that I, I customize it so that it, um, it's a little bit less jittery. It, it still has a little bit of jitter, but, um, uh, basically I wanted to make sure that it, it looks consistent. Um, and then I also wanted to be able to pixelate it. Um, and so I kind of edited the UV work a little bit in a shader and made it so that I could pixelize it. And so that way... I can get completely 3D objects, um, but this is actually just a 2D plane. It's it's not it's not 3D, um, and you'll see that in just a second. So, anywho, um, what comes with that though is that means that I basically had to model an individual model for every single uh, animation. And so, for example, or for every single frame of an animation. So for my uh, let me go to reset. Make sure that's visible, and then yeah. So for my run animation, I actually have four unique uh, frames, and then his right arm doesn't move because he's holding a weapon in that um, in that hand. And yeah, so that kind of looks it kind of looks funky, but um, you get used to it after a, a bit. Um, and so yeah, so my player script. I uh, once again, I've I've kind of refactored everything from my last uh, prototype and my pr player script is just ginormous because I'm using all the um, all the puppet functions and everything to try to get everything synchronized and that's been a little bit of a headache but um, it's been a, a slow process to build up some comfort with and I think I have a pretty good sense of how it works now um, and then one one tool that I really recommend everybody use for any sort of networking game is uh, multi-run and what that will allow you to do is run multiple windows, and I'll show you that now. And so right now, I actually only have two items working because of my refactor, so I don't have any guns working right now, but I do have um, a couple of items working. So I'm going to host on one and join on the other, and then start. And so as you can see, on one screen, hey, there's a guy in blue, and the other screen there's a guy in red. So I have the teams being assigned for each player. And you can see that the result of the, uh, the 3D version of the duck is actually pretty uh, it's pretty seamless, and um, it makes things a lot easier. Um, I guess that as they say, you know, work work smarter and not harder. And so instead of me rendering everything and writing my own like um, my, my my own code to um, uh, you know uh, make the duck visible from a different angle and everything, and, and use like an animated sprite 3D. No, nah, let's just use the shader that just you know, renders this plane in the way I want to, and then kind of animate each plane. Um, and so here's some of my items. I have like this spinny top, and you can see that the items are reflected on the uh, the other other uh, serve uh, the other client. And then if I pick up another item, you can actually see that um, this one's a bomb, and so you can actually see the uh, that I have an item equipped on my back, and that's completely seamless. Like it it just works. Um, and then, 
yeah, you can switch between them like that. You can see that being reflected on each session. So uh, I'll show you how the, uh, oh yeah, I still have the glide functionality from the last time. And that one trans transitioned over really easily because uh, it's basically the same code. So that was nice. Oh, I also have this new function to uh, enter the shell state. And basically this will kind of act like a Super Smash Brothers shield. Uh, but you can actually move in it, and so you're, you have limited movement, but it's it's still uh, something, and you can actually like bounce off walls and stuff to uh, climb up things. But you only have like a limited amount of health in this state, and once your health is your shield is broken or whatever, you you'd crack out, and then uh, then you're vulnerable again, uh, and then you you won't be able to enter the uh, shell um, for a brief time. All right, so let's uh let's just check this out with the uh, top so you can see with my top I just have it so that it bounces off things and then just kind of keeps its momentum uh, keep on uh, keeps on going and then for bombs of course you would expect them to um, let me just throw it at the uh, blue guy over here you would just expect them to oh there we go oh, didn't quite see it but let me, uh, let me see if I can get him Nope. Okay, I got it now. Okay, there you go. So yeah, it kind of like uh, adds an impulse on the other the other person. It behaves like you would expect a real bomb to, and there it actually knocked him off. So yeah, so that's kind of the uh, state of my my game. I'm also planning to. Um, I think I've decided to officially publish my game on got, gotm.io and the reason why is because I, I literally have to do almost no networking code myself in, in terms of uh, trying to you know discover stuff. Gotm has some really nice tools to um, create lobbies and everything's just handled through 127.0.0.1 and there's like some API calls that you can do um, to find lobbies and everything and, and like there's even uh, almost a way to do a de dedicated server, or at least fake it. Um, so I, I'm really looking forward to playing around with that. Um, and uh, I, I think I really have something that could um, that could be quite a success um, and quite a lot of fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, brief uh, developer update. I'll uh, hopefully see you soon.